Hey, welcome back, folks. I want to talk to you today about one of my all-time favorites, the Master Pack Square D NW Series. Today, we want to look at the secondary controls for the functions on your breaker. So if you ever have to troubleshoot these or you're having problems with your breaker uh, from a controls side, uh, this hopefully will help you. So stay tuned. We'll get right to that. All right, let's jump right in there. We're talking about secondary controls today, so I've already obviously removed the cover from the breaker to expose all the mechanism and all the controls and all the con communications right here. So we're going to loosen the cover. This is going to be the, where we can get to the terminals for all of the components for the controls. You've got a little code right here. We're going to explain that in just a second. Put him where you can see him. And then now we're going to jump right in and take all of our coils out, but you got your closing coil, excuse me, your shunt trip coil, your closing coil, and then you've got your under voltage relay or your UV. So let's just take the one retainer screw out of the top. A little spring loaded jobby there. Okay. So this right here, something else we want to show you. This guy also, if I can hold on to him. He also is, you can see right here, he's got the code is also going to be found here. The same code is on this block here. We'll touch on that code in just a second to give you some more clarity on it. Now, we're going to start with our under voltage coil. We're going to pull the under voltage. This is the, the tray, the wire connection for the under voltage. You'll notice there's a little code there is, again. So we've covered with codes. That's a good thing. Once you learn that little code, it really will simplify life for you. All right. Pull your little wires out of there. Well, he's back in there, isn't he? All right. This is going to be your under voltage coil. We'll put him where you can see him. And then we'll take the uh, shunt trip off the front. And we'll take the, the other coil there, your closing coil side by side again you notice that these have identification right there on the terminal strip so let me stack those up there where you can see them you, at first glance you can see these are very similar they both have two wires coming out they both have uh, the same termination point with a little track system and an identification code right here on the front if you can see that uh, but let's look at these coils the difference you can see immediately, or if you look at it kind of close, uh, you can see this shaft right here coming out of the end. This bottom one is the UVR, the under voltage, which is right over here on the left side. Its shaft sticks out farther. Well, it is just, it's opposite from these other two coils. It has to be, when it's energized, it will actually pull in and it's maintained. So it has to have power on it the whole time. If you lose power, the breaker will trip open. Moving up, you got your closing coil and your, sh uh, your closing and your shunt trip. Uh, these two, just a little fun fact, these are the same part. Depending on where I put them in location, I can change them out. Just depends on where they're mounted on the breaker. So if I move this one forward, it was a closing coil. It now becomes a shunt trip coil. Opens the breaker, closes the breaker. So that's pretty cool. Uh, ABB does that and Square D also does that. Same part, interchangeable. That's a good thing if you find yourself uh, having an extra shunt trip but you need a closing coil, you can interchange it. So let's look at the codes and the identification on these guys. I told you a minute ago, we've got, if you can see that there, the codes are written here. There's a little, little lettering system on each one of these little sections right here. Those line up with the little sections where the terminations go for your connection. That also, that same code is here on the retainer cap that goes on top to hold all three of the coils down. And it has a little hole right here. You'll notice a hole in each corner. Each one of those holes actually is for these little dimples you see on the end right here. They fit right in there and they'll go over the top of those and they'll, they'll line up on that hole when you're centered up on this shaft. So it helps to, and this shaft is also timed 
with a flat spot inside and a flat spot here. So you know you, you turn it right and then it also will make your identification line up. So let's cover that identification for you real quick. Hopefully this will help you if you ever get in a, in a pickle at two in the morning trying to figure out why your breaker won't close. All right, so starting with the coils coming across, we've got our MX. The MX is gonna be your shunt trip. And you'll notice also, it's really dirty, but in the top plate down here, it also is stamped inside the top plate. So it's stamped here, stamped on the top, stamped on the component, and stamped on the cover. So it pretty much will walk you through it. But the MX is the shunt trip. The XF is the shunt close. It goes directly behind it in this bay right here. And then you have the under voltage, which is MN. It's going to go right over here. Again, that one will not let the breaker close if it's not energized. And lastly, which we left him alone. We didn't cover him today. We did in another video. This is the MCH. That's your motor charging unit. It goes down to a cutoff switch and then to your whole charging motor here. So another video about that you can check out. So that is a quick breakdown on the communications, the secondary controls, their functions, their identifications, and their code definitions. Uh, hopefully this helps. Uh, if we can help you with anything else, give us a call, or you can reach us uh, at electricalpowerandcontrol.com. Thank you again, and God bless.